Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to our tape-up review of the 148 scale Academy Atelieri Accurate Miniatures 148 scale B25B. This kit was originally issued by Accurate Miniatures in the early 1990s, and while it has great surface detail, there are some fit issues that you should be aware of. So we'll start off this review with some gluing tips, then we'll move on to the tape-up, and then I'll give you some recommendations on some aftermarket products that will help you enhance the appearance of this model. And finally, we'll do a review of the sprues as they appear in the kit. This kit is actually the second B25B that's been issued by a kit manufacturer. The first one was issued by the Old Revell Company in the early 1980s. The Revell kit had accurate surface detail, including petite raised rivets, and petite raised panel lines to represent lap joints, which is what the fuselage of the B-25B, actually the entire B-25 series, had on its surface. Unfortunately, typical of Revell kits of the period, there was almost no interior detail at all, including in the cockpit. So, with that short historical note, let's get started. The Bombay area goes together just like the monogram kit with a left and right bulkhead and a top. I recommend you tape these parts together, get a real snug fit inside the fuselage, and then glue them together. There are nicely detailed left and right sides for the interior of the Bombay. Unfortunately, the curvature of these parts don't match the curvature of the fuselage halves. There's about an eighth of an inch gap on these left and right fuselage parts inside the bomb bay. The first step in fixing this gap is to go ahead and glue these left and right sides where the bomb bay door openings are located. There's two ways to fix this gap. One is to push down on the part and then use super glue to attach it to the fuselage or use some evergreen strip stock in order to fill the gap. I chose to just super glue the parts to the fuselage. I was a little bit concerned that it would contort the shape of the fuselage because the fuselage plastic is so thin, but it turned out pretty good. The navigator station has several parts. The first step is to position this part correctly and use some tiny drops of super glue to hold it in place. Then remove the part and run a bead of super glue along the top area where it connects to the bulkhead of the bomb bay. Now you can attach the rest of the parts to the navigator's compartment. Position the cockpit bulkhead and the floor into place with liberal amounts of tape. While holding the parts together tightly against the fuselage, add a few drops of super glue to the underside to hold everything in place. Then remove the part and add a bead of super glue along the bottom. Then add the Norden bombsite tunnel and add drops of super glue at the red arrow locations. Then carefully apply a tiny bead of super glue on the inside area of the tunnel to close up this void. The bombardier's location has a separate forward part just like on the monogram kit. There are two nicely detailed left and right sides to this forward area. Glue them in place with the red arrows, but do not glue the bottom area where the green arrows are located, and I'll explain why in a minute. The bombardier's bulkhead location fits nicely onto the fuselage. However, I recommend that you glue it from the backside so that no glue will interfere with the forward part that will attach to it. This is how you should mask off the Bombay area in order to airbrush it and then detail paint it and weather it before you get to the rest of the fuselage interior. There are two positioning tabs that need to be removed where the black arrows are in order for the decking that attaches to that bulkhead to sit correctly. With the positioning tabs removed, this part, which is needed for the underside turret assembly, will sit correctly and it will be positioned evenly between the two fuselage halves, as in this photo. If you don't remove those tabs, it'll be skewed to one side. 
This void where the undersod remote control turret sits will actually mostly be hidden, but if you want to fill it, I recommend that you prime it first and then fill it and contour it with white glue. The fit of the fuselage halves is pretty good, but because the plastic is so thin, it's really important to make sure that the left and right halves are even when you apply super glue along the seam line. Otherwise, your sanding may cause a serious problem with thinning the plastic so bad that it collapses. The fit of the Bombardier's forward location piece is fairly good on the bottom side. Glue just the bottom area first with a good bead of super glue and let it dry completely. There's a slight inward indentation on the starboard side of the forward piece, which you can carefully pull out and super glue into place because you didn't glue the bottom half of the interior part in place. The port side forward piece has a really bad inward indentation. Pulling this side out will cause some stress on the bottom half of the part, but that's okay. Use super glue and accelerator to get this part level with the rest of the fuselage. Otherwise, the canopy isn't going to sit correctly. And here again, because you didn't glue the bottom side of that interior part, you can stretch this part out. Had you glued that part into place on both the top and the bottom, you wouldn't be able to manipulate that forward part to get it to sit level with the outside of the fuselage on both the port and starboard side. The fit of the rudder and tail assemblies is pretty good. The voids on the tail assembly on the starboard side are slightly larger than the ones on the port side. There are significant voids on the bottom of the tail assembly where it attaches to the fuselage, but these can be filled with several applications of white glue after the area has been primed. The fit of the main wing halves is fairly tight on both the trailing edge and the leading edge. However, just like on the monogram kit, you're going to have to deal with this opening where the landing lights are located. I recommend that you fill it with white glue after the area has been primed. The fit of the engine nacelle halves is nice and tight. However, just like on the monogram kit, you're going to lose some detail when you work on the seams. I recommend on the interior areas that you add some strips of plastic along the seam lines to help reinforce those parts before you start working on the seams. The fit of the engine nacelles onto the lower parts of the wing are pretty good. The edges of the nacelles sit level with the edges of the wing where they attach, and the seams are pretty narrow. So super glue can be used to fill these seams and then sand it smooth. The attachment of the nacelles to the trailing edges of the wings has several large gaps that you're going to have to fill. For the large openings, I recommend that you use strips of evergreen strip stock to fill those gaps and use layers of super glue on both sides of the strip stock to secure them in place before sanding. The other openings can be filled with super glue and then sanded smooth, but it's going to take several applications. The air intakes for the engines on the tops of the wings have some gaps that need to be filled, and they're not level with the surface of the wing, so I recommend using super glue to fill them. The kit also has separate parts for the exhaust ports, and these parts fit fairly tightly onto the fuselage, and for the tiny seam work, I recommend you prime the areas and fill these areas with white glue. The engine cowlings fit nicely onto the engine's nacelles, and those seam lines for the forward part of the air intake can easily be filled with super glue and sanded smooth. The R2600 engines look pretty good from the front. However, the wiring harnesses that come with the kit are way too short, so I recommend you replace them with a set of 3D printed engines. The landing gear can be attached to the inside of the wing areas after the engine nacelles have been attached and after all the painting is completed. The tire hubs don't fit well onto the tires, and the best solution here is just replace them with a set of resin tires. 
There's some gaps on both sides of the wings where they attach to the fuselage on both the upper side and the bottom sides. Once these surfaces are primed, these gaps can be filled with several applications of white glue and use a damp Q-tip to contour each application of glue. These two-part Masters 50 caliber machine guns will really enhance the appearance of the model. And as I recommended, get a set of resin replacement tires. Edward makes a really nice pre-painted cockpit interior ear that is specific for this model. And don't forget the Edward pre-painted seatbelts. These 3D printed R2600 engines are produced by Resin2 Details and I highly recommend them as a replacement for the kit supplied engines. I hope you enjoyed this review. In our next review of a B25, we're going to do a tape up of the brand new HK 148 scale B25J which I should have published by January 1st. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music and happy scale modeling!